going to be showing you how I back my paintings. Um, I, I personally like to back them. I don't like selling a painting or even giving a painting away that's not backed and ready to hang. Um, anyway, I'll be showing you how I do that. And I'll be talking a little bit about what, why I do it. So first I have these cutouts that I've made. This is a foam board, 10 by 20. There's this is a cardboard, a little thicker, or a little thinner than this, 11 by 14, 8 by 10 sizes, 10 by 10, all kinds of different sizes that I use. I already have these pre-cut out, so I keep them together. So when I start to back my paintings, I can just lay that down on some, I use this thick butcher paper, and I cut it out, and that way, it's, it's the size that I need every time. So it just saves some time. This butcher paper is pretty thick. I get it in a huge roll and I got it at Amazon. So I roll it out and then I cut it out, trace it, cut it out, and however many I need. Sometimes I just do extra so I don't have to do it again. Some of the tools I need um, are, or the products I, I use, these D-rings and screws. This is the size that I like. They come in different sizes. I'm not sure what size this is, but then they have like a, a little rough side, and then they have a smooth side. I'll talk about how I put those on. They come with screws. Um, the felt pads, dollar store. Put those at the bottom of the painting so it keeps it away from the wall. Doesn't the painting doesn't scratch the wall. I use tacky glue on part of the butcher paper. I use this galvanized steel wire, 10 pound, 24 gauge. This is also, I got it off of Amazon. Um, if you have a heavier painting, you can always just double this. I have some business cards. I like to tape on the back of the butcher paper. Use clear tape, tape those on. A couple pens to sign. Um, craft paper tape, that's what I hold butcher paper to the canvas. I like doing it this way and I'll explain later all the different ways I've tried and this is the way I like the most. <clears throat> different craft knives, scissors, to cut out the paper, and my Makita electric screwdriver. <clears throat> anyway, that's what I use and I'll be back with you in just a minute and I'm going to do a few so you can see how I do it. Okay, I'm back. I'm going to be backing this 10 by 20, um, this painting right here. There's some glitter, some glitter paint. Oh, you can't really see it here. So I already signed the back, and this is the one I'm going to be backing right now. So usually when I do this, I do a bunch at a time because it's, this isn't my favorite thing to do. So I traced around this scribe, this model, and I'm going to be cutting it out right now. And yeah, this is, you know, I like to paint. I don't like to do this. Some people don't think it, you know, don't, don't like to back their paintings. They think it doesn't look, I don't know. They like the organic look of having the messy back or just leaving it leaving it like it is. And if I pre-sell any of my paintings before I varnish and back them, I will ask, ask them if they want it back. Most everybody says yes so far. Um, and I'm happy to do it. But I don't know. I just like backing them. I like the way it looks. I understand people that don't. And who knows, maybe someday I'll just tape off the back. I mean, I don't have to tape off my backs if I do this. So either way, you have to do a little extra if you want it to look nice. And then some people don't want to do it because they think that the painting can't breathe. Maybe call it cause mildew. But um, I let my paintings dry for at least three weeks before I back them, usually more, by the time I finish varnishing and all that. So I'm not really worried about that, but I do put a little tiny triangle 
hole in the back to let it breathe, just in case um, somebody's worried about that. I'm not really worried. Okay, so this paper comes in a big roll, which usually doesn't lay flat. That's why the glue comes in handy. I could use double back tape here, and I have done, um, I've done this different ways. Um, I've used double back tape and cut this out perfect, the butcher paper. I've done it um, with staples. Um, I've done it with just glue. I've done it, um, those are the three ways I've done it. And now I just like the tape. I think it looks more finished. It sticks better. This, use a tacky glue just to hold it down because it's not flat. So I cut the paper a half an inch shorter so the tape has somewhere to stick. And this glue just sort of holds it flat so I can tape it. I know we have some Floridians watching. I hope that hurricane is going to somehow not hit Florida. My stepdaughter's there. I have a really good friend there. And they got burned out in the Santa Rosa fire. They bought it in Florida. And now we have a hurricane coming. So prayers to all you guys. And any family you might have. So now I just take the tape. Tape it on the edge. And then I cut it. Let me turn it around. That's all there is to that. So then I make sure, you know, which way do I want to hang it. Um, the reason why I say how I want to hang it or how I think someone's going to hang it is because I like to put the hangers on. Um, sometimes I put these in coffee shops or um, I have a few little stores downtown that's hanging my work. I never know. I mean, it might hang in my house for a while um, to get it out of the way, or just maybe I like it, and I'll hang it up for a while. So um, they have the hardware. If they ever want to change it, they can. So I'm thinking that I, I think I'm going to hang it this way. So flip it over. So this is a 10 by 20. So you want to come one quarter to one third of the way down. So this is 10 inches, so it's about three and a quarter inches right here on the line. Right there. I do use a hammer, a little nail. Make a little hole, a starter hole for the screw. These are D-rings. There's a smooth edge. The other side has a little, it's rough around the edge. So I put the rough edge down. You can't see it. And just put that 
that in. I do use my PETA, my quick screwdriver. Saves your wrist. Saves a lot of time. On the other side. And I point these towards the inside, but not all the way, sort of angled. Put them where you want them. Okay, the wire. This is a long distance, so the trick to this is keeping the wire tight when you, after you do the first one. So I'm going to have about two and a half inches longer than you need it. You want to have room to work. So it's about right there. Okay. This is a 10 pound 24 gauge wire. How I put the wire on is I come underneath, put it through. I come underneath again and then put it through put it through the loop. There's a loop here. Forms. Put it back through the loop. Here's where my needle nose comes in handy. It's easier just to grab it and pull it tight with the needle nose like that. Okay. Then you want to loop it around. I don't know, three to four times, four to five, however many you feel like you want to do. I usually do about four. That way it's not going anywhere. And if you have a heavier painting, you can still use this gauge wire. All you need to do is just, you can double it up. And then you just snip it. If you need to push it down a little bit, you can. Okay, this is a side that has a problem. So I just have to make sure I'm going to keep it low. Like down here. I'm going to go pull it tight to begin with. Even when I do that, it. Okay, that's as tight as it can go. Go ahead and pull it through. This time I was able to do it pretty good. All right, got it. Okay, so that's how that is. Out a little bit. All right, and then I put these little furniture protectors, felt protectors on each corner. Helps it stay off the wall. This sticking out a little bit. This evens it out. And I sign my name. Okay. And Then I go over here and get my two cards here. <clears throat> Put my card on here. You can glue it on, tape it on. <clears throat> I just just tape it on there. That way, if they do want to pull it off to keep it or file it, they don't tear up the painting, tear up the back. So that's on there. <clears throat> I told you about that little hole. So, just put one right here. Get, get a sharp little craft knife like this. And cut a little triangle. Doesn't have to be that big. Like that, and then tuck it under. See? Okay, like that. And I'm not sure the name. 
that I'm going to call this, but um, I just started getting these tags and I'm not sure if I want to use them or not. Maybe you can comment on if I should or not. I don't know. I don't think they take one of these tags and let's say I call this one Bliss, which I don't know if that's what I'm going to call it. I haven't named it yet. And this is a 10 by 20 inch. So I would go like that. I'm not going to stick it on because I'm not sure if that's what I want to call. And I would stick it right here in the middle. And then that would be my finished back. Okay, and that would be it. And I'm glad when I get to this point. So if you have any questions, comments, go ahead and comment below. Um, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please ask. I'll be happy to answer. Have a good night.